You ever just look around at the world and think, man, when did the mass castration of men happen? What are all these quote-unquote men who wear glasses without a prescription, who ask for their steak medium well, and who won't drink their coffee without half of it being creamer and skim milk? There's only one thing I hate more than lying. Skim milk. Which is water that's lying about being milk. Well, sometimes a reminder of what real men look like is a breath of fresh air. And what could possibly do that job better than watching a group of jacked men with facial hair kill Nazis for two hours? And it's a true story. Well, kind, kind of. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is more than just a movie that's going to doom my title for this video to be longer than I want. It's fun. I had fun watching this. More fun than I even had watching Godzilla multiplied by Kong. Because as fun as it is watching a giant monkey punch a radioactive T-Rex, CGI monsters can't capture the charisma that comes from a couple of bros laughing in the face of some German sailors who are giving them the biggest I'm evil speech ever before massacring them and blowing up an entire Nazi battleship. That's how this movie starts. You know it's going to be good. In 1942, when the Nazis were at the British doorstep and had many British leaders seriously considering surrender, the legend himself, Winston Churchill, sanctioned an off-the-books mission to cripple the Germans' U-boat fleet so that the Americans could safely reach Europe and basically save the Western world. Rock, flag, and eagle! It was a real-life suicide squad mission. No one could know they had been sent on it. If they got picked up by British forces, they would be thrown in prison. If they got captured by the Nazis, well, that certainly would have sucked. Their goal was to destroy the German supply of carbon dioxide filters in Fernando Po so that their U-boats couldn't be used. So I guess it's kind of a heist movie, and you'll get some real nostalgia for Casablanca at times with the setting on Fernando Po. The characters are fun. Some of them aren't particularly memorable, but none of them are grinding, and they've got good enough chemistry. No one is going to win an Oscar for their acting, there just isn't enough depth to any of the characters to open the door for a stellar performance. Henry Cavill and Alan Richson stand out the most, mainly because Alan Richson is the size of three men and probably curls what I squat. But the star of the movie for me is Eliza Gonzalez's character, Marjorie Stewart. She is an absolute dog. I don't know if Marjorie Stewart actually did all the stuff they said she did in this movie, but if she did even like 71% of it, we should kick Marilyn Monroe to the curb in our history brains and replace her with Marjorie Stewart. She is a weapon in this movie. At a point where I'm ready to cough up blood anytime I see a 5 foot 5, 115 pound woman overpower a criminal bodyguard, this was truly awesome. Liza Gonzalez shows how women actually can beat men with charm, beauty, class, and intrigue, but I can't go through a review of a movie without finding something to criticize. I'll say this, if you're doing a report on Operation Postmaster, this movie is not going to help you. That's what this Special Forces mission was called, and that would probably work for a better title, but I guess Guy Ritchie doesn't want to release two Operation movies in back-to-back -back years. Now, in real life, Operation Postmaster was accomplished, I think, without any casualties. Well, Without even needing to spoil the movie if you've seen the trailer, there's a fair amount of violence and dead Nazis to tell a true story of a successful stealth mission where no one died. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare plays out more like Inglorious Bastards, except with Brits instead of Jews, and without the iconic lines in Brad Pitt. As a bushwhacking guerrilla army, we're gonna be doing one thing, and one thing only. Killing Nazis. Well... I speak the most Italian, so I'll be your escort. Donovan speaks second most, so he'll be your Italian cameraman. Omar third most, so he'll be Donnie's assistant. I don't speak Italian. Like I said, third best. And I don't think it needs to be embellished. The story of a top-secret, unsanctioned stealth mission is strong enough to carry itself, and would probably stay in my memory longer than this movie will. The trailer isn't lying. This mission really did change the course of history. And World War II is so fascinating with so many stories of incredible courage and strength and resilience, I think those should have their day. But I will say, I'm super biased. My family fought in World War II, and a book was written based in large part on my great uncle's recollection of the Battle of Leyte Golf. So I, I kind of want to see that movie. But Guy Ritchie did the same thing of injecting violence where it didn't need to be in Sherlock Holmes, too. 
Maybe he doesn't trust himself to hold an audience's attention for two hours without a healthy dose of fight scenes. Or maybe he just really likes directing action scenes, like Tarantino with his copious amounts of blood. Why the need for so much gruesome graphic violence? Why not let us imagine Because it's a little so bit? much fun, Chan! Get really? it! Whatever it is, the result here is a really fun movie that anyone who likes watching men excel at being men, and women excel at being women, who bleeds red, white, and blue, British or American, will have a great time watching. All right, the sauce. <laughs> what? The sauce. I don't know. You're using too much sauce. Okay? Review's over.